Yeah, we got people still joining. So I'm gonna give it just a second. I hadn't looked at the uh, national weather or anything, but my goodness, is it cold for anybody else? We've like had this horrible cold front move in. It's been rainy and nasty and everything here. Man. Okay. Well, we won't delay. I know Mark is um, getting some things set up in the background, but that's okay. Um, he can continue to do his thing and uh, let me move this over here so I can see when someone enters the room and needs let in. So, okay, uh, but welcome back everyone. I'm glad everyone is able to join us again this evening. I know we have a few people that were not able to make it um, but we're recording so that we can send this recording to them when they're done. So, uh, Mark, I don't have control of the of the PowerPoint. Are you ready to roll on? Okay. Uh, am I still muted? It says I'm muted. Hold on. Uh, uh, can you hear me? No, you're not muted. Okay, yeah. I just sit on my screen and muted. Okay. Um, uh, can I give you control? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? You know, uh, uh, I can, you know, I can do... you want us just to wait and hang out a second? Oh, no, 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 I'm ready stuff. to roll. It, 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 just go and 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 I'll I'll go as as we go. So, yeah, don't don't even worry right. about me. I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so welcome back to the marketing boot camp. Tonight is our last session to be together. I hope everyone has enjoyed the class so far and learned a lot of stuff. And um, Anna Maria, I think that was maybe you that chimed in a minute ago that you're learning a lot and uh, putting a lot of what you're learning into practice. So that's awesome and I'm glad to hear that. Um, this webinar is, again, um, or this class is being brought to you by the Institute of American Indian Arts Continuing Education Program. Um, and I think I've probably mentioned it in the past, but they have a whole lot of really interesting courses that they are putting on this semester, not just business courses, but courses over a lot of different topics. So if you have not been over to the continuing education site at I, I, I encourage you to do so and see what else that they have to offer. At our old, can, can you go back, Mark, just in case somebody needs this, um, if you, our old contact there, uh, Jonathan Breaker, uh, found a new opportunity and left the university. So uh, the contact now is Lori Logan Brayshaw and, uh, of course, whenever we send you the recording, you can get this or you can just go to IIA Continue in Education and, and get her contact information there as well. Okay, next slide. Okay. And we are Indian Dispute Resolution Services. So uh, I know we introduced ourselves pretty thoroughly during the first session, but we are a Native nonprofit organization that provides training and small business counseling to Native Americans, primarily in California, Nevada, and Oklahoma, but we do work with people all across the United States. I know we have several people here from New Mexico and, and in other areas. So uh, if you're interested in getting any kind of small business counseling, you're welcome to reach out to us. Also, we have a whole array Sorry, guys, I'm going to get my phone there. Uh, we have a, a whole array of different trainings that we are developing right now. We are actually working with the U.S. Department of, um, sorry, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and the Indian Arts and Crafts Board to host a series of webinars for Native artists who are interested in um, getting more into e-commerce. So if that's something that you're interested in, I encourage you to either contact me and ask for the information or go to our Facebook page um, or our website, nativebiz.org, and you'll be able to find more information about that webinar series there. But we've got some other things going on as well, but that's definitely the big one that we have. Next slide, Mark. <clears throat> uh, my name again is Lynn Wilson. Um, I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. And if you reach out to us for any kind of small business counseling, I'm the primary person 
person that you would be working with. And then of course, the other person that we have with us that's been teaching uh, much of the class is our executive director, Mark Thompson. And our contact information, it kind of popped up there for just a brief minute. But again, if you go to nativebiz.org, you'll be able to uh, find all of our contact information and reach out to us that way. So tonight is session four of four. We're gonna run for about two hours. So um, for those of you in the mountain time zone, that's gonna be about 8.30 PM. This, as you've probably seen throughout all the other sessions, we're very laid back, not formal at all. So if you have a question as we're going through the presentation, you can chat it. We'll pay attention to the chat box. You're also welcome to unmute yourself and simply ask the question. We don't mind being interrupted for questions. Uh, so feel free to do that. I just ask that you please keep yourself muted when you're not coming on to ask a question, just in case you have a uh, you know, dogs, kids, different things in the background like I do that could that could be disruptive to everybody else. And any resources that we have, we'll make sure and post into that chat box. But um, remember, we also had a class website and, and there's probably gonna be a slide popping up on that. Yes, the marketing bootcamp.weebly.com. Uh, so we've been putting all of the class resources there on that website site and that website will continue to stay live even after this session uh, this class is over so you don't have to worry about um, you know after tonight like oh shoot you know where's you know I, I needed some assets from that class it's just going to remain there um, indefinitely so just know that you can always go there and find class recordings and handouts and things of that nature okay Mark oh, oh there it is well, you want me to take it from here, Lynn? Yeah, sure. Oh, I was going to say, um, just kind of in quick review of last week's session. You know, last week we talked, it was all about social media. So we talked about some different strategies for marketing and social media. Mark will probably go into a little bit more of that tonight. And um, we had a really great presenter with us last week, Roxanne Best. I know everyone loved Roxanne. She was definitely the star of the last class. And I wanna let you know that there was a, a glitch with the class recording, which is why it has not been put up. But if you guys are interested in learning more about what she was talking about, you know, Canva, you, how to use Canva to create posts and different marketing assets, I have put a video up on the class website for the session three uh, to that. You can also go to our YouTube channel. I'm gonna add that to the resource page too because uh, Rox or Roxanne has done a lot of webinars for us on different social media topics. You know how to use Instagram. If you are an Instagram user, you know how to create reels, how to use Facebook to market your business. So we have a whole playlist of social media webinars that we've um, had with Roxanne that you can access and watch. Okay, now I'll turn it over to you, Mark. Um, Lynn, uh, a quick question. Yeah. If we wanna look at those videos on YouTube um, that you made, um, do we look at, I see, wait a minute, IDRS? Or do we look for your name or do we look for- I'm gonna post, it's, it's IDRS and I will actually, um, Anna Maria, I will get the direct link here and I'll just post it into chat. Okay, so I thank you. ask everyone a favor. If you do happen to go to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, can you please follow us? Like once we hit, I don't know, I think it's maybe 100 uh, people that follow our channel, we get to create a unique URL for, for our organization. Um, and that's something we've been striving to do. YouTube is one of those things we've kind of, you know, we started putting stuff on YouTube. We haven't promoted the YouTube channel real heavily, but if you do happen to go to YouTube and watch the videos, if you could just follow our channel, it would be very much appreciated. And I'll get that link and post it here in the chat in just a second. All righty. Uh, well, thank you very much, Lynn. Um, so Lynn and I are kind of going to tag team tonight on, uh, so uh, Lynn did the introduction. So, and I'm gonna do this uh, th this first section, we're gonna go back and forth, but today is all about promotions. Last week was all about social media promotions. 
And uh, this week is all about all the other promotions that you can do. So um, uh, our agenda tonight, I, I just created this little agenda because um, we kind of have a, kind of a laundry list of, of different things that we're going to go over, advertising, public relations, interactive uh, promotions, uh, and we have kind of a, even a catch-all, and then Lynn's going to finish up uh, with the marketing story. The reason why we did the, um, you know, like, uh, like why we uh, started with social media uh, for promotions is we figured that's where a lot of of the uh, folks that were attending this uh, this workshop would start, um, you know. But what we did want to do is we wanted to make sure to expose you to some of the other uh, the other um, things that we have. Uh, in the other, uh, um, excuse me, I, I have these things thinking I'm thinking about that I, that I just remembered. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. But the, the, um, uh, you know, we wanted to talk about these other types of promotions as well because while they may not all be appropriate for your business, some might also be appropriate. And you may um, think that they're expensive, but they can actually be quite uh, affordable or even uh, totally free. And so we wanted to make sure that you guys knew about them. The thing that was uh, in my head, uh, that is popped in my head is um, I had promised uh, the, uh, the remainder P's and the four P's of marketing. I have recorded that. And I had meant to send that to Lynn for her to post uh, to the um, uh, to our uh, to our boot camp website, and I had forgotten to do that, and that just popped in my head. So I'll make sure to do that after the class, and that will be up there as well. But that has been completed, and so then you'll have. Uh, I guess we've been going for about this will be eight hours today, and uh, that uh, webinar, uh, that little extension that I recorded was another hour. So you get a full nine hours of content on building uh, your marketing plan. Okay, so so let's get going here. Uh, we're going to start with advertising. And I think a lot of times when we think about um, we think about promotions, this is where our mind goes first. Or, or even when we hear marketing, right? When we hear, oh, we're going marketing, a lot of times we're thinking about advertising. And advertising uh, you know, so what's the definition of that? It's basically just in my mind, you know, there, here, here's the definition. This is from the marketing dictionary this is where I get these, uh, these definitions every week. Um, but, you know, in my mind is you're really paying for, uh, you know, a type of, uh, a type of advertising to get your potential customer to do something that, you know, that's, that's really what it is. So it's not just, letting people know about your um, business. You know, you could do that uh, by putting uh, your name on like a pin or a t-shirt. Uh, those are all forms of promotions, but I don't really consider that advertising. I, I really feel you're trying to get your customer to do something and you're paying, uh, you know, you're paying for an ad essentially uh, to do that. But there's many different ways to place uh, those ads. Can anybody uh, think of ways to advertise? And, you know, if you want to come off mute or even just in the chat box, uh, you know, go ahead. Any, any ways that you can think of that or places you've seen advertising before? Mark, advertising is mostly paid for, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I would say that uh, that advertising is paid for. I think that would be the de uh, the definition. Some people may say that I mean, because somebody could give it uh, give it to you for free and give you an ad for free. So I don't know that it always has to be paid. But I think in general, uh, advertise uh, advertising is is a paid medium. And so uh, Gina has said Facebook, right? So we have social. Uh, what to say social media ads, right? Because you know whether you're on Facebook whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on Twitter, you know, there's all different types of forms of advertising ads that you can pay for on those platforms. Any, any, other, any other types of advertising you guys can think of? Flyers, you know, everybody, billboards. <laughs> but, oh, billboards, great. Um, uh, you know, uh, Gina, you, you mentioned website. I don't uh, you know, uh, we're going to talk about website. I don't know if website would necessarily be considered an ad. Now you can advertise like on display advertising on people's websites. Um, so uh, a tribal newsletter, 
um, you know, uh, you know, there's definitely, you know, a display ads that you can put in a, tr a tribal newsletter. So that's definitely uh, an area. Um, placemats. Okay. Right. If you go to a restaurant, you could put uh, ads, you could see some uh, different restaurants. They sell advertising on like their paper placemats. I know this might date me, but the yellow pages. Oh, the yellow pages. That was one of my favorites. You know, uh, when I was a DJ and I got to put my advertisement in the uh, phone book, I was very excited, very expensive, very expensive. So, um, okay. So, you know, I'm surprised that what I'm not hearing though, is what I typically think of when we think of advertising and that's broadcast, uh, you know, and, and so that's stuff that you would see on TV, right? I know and maybe everybody's watching Netflix now, um, you know, and so they're not watching uh, the regular TV any longer, but uh, for many years, it's, it's TV advertising, right? Or if you're listening to the radio, nobody listens to the radio anymore. So um, it's radio advertising. One of the things is I also think that some of this advertising kind of crosses mediums. So I put like podcasts. So I listen to a podcast and there's ads on the podcast. You know, now is that uh, is that broadcast or is that, you know, a different form of media? The same thing on YouTube, right? If you're sitting there, you know, it's it's um, you know, there's an ad that goes before the video that you watched on YouTube. Is that broadcast? You know, a lot of these lines are getting blurred now with the way that we're taking in information. Um, but I think it's, uh, but, but I think you can get the gist. So some of these other methods of print, uh, there's the phone book. I made sure to include it, Anna Maria. Um, outdoor advertising, I think Danielle uh, had mentioned that. Um, you know, with billboards, maybe vehicle ads. I, I think I saw that, um, uh, I think Gina had mentioned magnets for cars. And, and, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say just a magnet for your own car, but, uh, you know, if you go to like, you know, you may see cabs, like, especially when you go to Vegas, you know, every single vehicle th uh, there has, you know, an ad on the side of it. Um, you know, there could be event advertising, uh, direct mail, direct advertising. Um, or excuse me, digital advertising. And that's, you know, things like display. And when you go to like um, uh, Google and you search something and you see those first listings, those are all search ads. And then of course, social media ads. And so there's a number of, uh, of, of ways that we talk about advertising. And I think, uh, I think that we probably think that advertising is out of reach. So the fir first thing I'd like to talk about when we're talking about advertising is looking at a shotgun versus rifle approach, okay? And so this is an old term, how they used to talk about, um, uh, how they talk, uh, they used to talk about advertising. And shotgun is basically, it, it, you can, uh, you know how a shotgun, right? It, you shoot a shotgun and it's not a direct, you know, bullet that hits a target, it, it spreads out, right? And so uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit a, a number of targets and there's not any one, uh, you know, one little buckshot that, that could kill. It's, it's the fact that, you know, but you're able to reach a wide area. So you're more likely to hit a target. Um, and that's like TV, right? You're not really um, talking to just your customer or your target customer, like we've talked about in previous classes, your avatar, but you're going to talk to a lot of people, but you're hoping that you're reaching enough people that you're getting enough of your customers that are listening. You're going to reach a lot of people that aren't your customers, but uh, you're going to uh, you're going to reach enough of your customers. That's what you're hoping to do. As you move down this list, it tends to get more, uh, you know, more focused, more targeted. And that's really that that rifle uh, uh, that rifle uh, advertising strategy, and it's really taken off with this digital uh, advertising, where you can actually um, really um, you know uh, geographically target customers um, before uh, Facebook even allowed you to do things like uh, target by uh, ethnicities, and they have really limited that. I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna show you some of how we uh, do our Facebook uh, advertising. And, um, it, it, you know, just as kind of a demonstration, because I think it's uh, just as a show to say, hey, you don't have to, uh, you know, be spending tons of money to do Facebook advertising. And we're no experts, but we just want to show you what we're doing. And, and we'll talk a little bit about how uh, the changes with Facebook are, are even starting to hurt us. Um, so, you know, um, 
I know that um, that not everybody in, in this class is are, are artists, right? Um, but there's probably very few of you that have mass produced products or the business that you're planning to start is going to be mass produced. But the more likely that your product is, uh, is mass produced, uh, the more that you're going to want to use the shotgun uh, method. You're going to want to reach you know, uh, as many people as possible because you need to sell a lot of your product to be profitable. Um, but the, 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 uh, the fewer uh, of the item you produce, maybe the more valuable, the more expensive the item that you produce is, the more that you want to be targeted in, in your advertising. And, and, and I wonder, do, do any of you um, believe that you could afford any of these um, advertising methods, especially as you move higher uh, up on this list? If it, it, like, you know, broadcast when we're looking at TV or radio or even print advertising. Uh, anybody in your small business uh, think that you could afford print advertising? I know for me personally, I don't really think I could. Of course, for what I create and sell I don't think print advertising is the I don't think that's really how I'm going to reach anyone you know it's it, it, well it may not be the best way right and, and that's one of the things we're talking about is always looking where your target market is but you know one of the things so uh, Lynn definitely knows Mary Beth Timothy I, we've mentioned her many times um, when you get my recording I've mentioned her many I have examples in there of Mary Beth so you're going to get to know Mary Beth uh, even though she's not in the class you're going to extensively know who Mary Beth Timothy is in Moonhawk Art but you know what I was thinking is with Moonhawk Art if um, is it Native Oklahoma Magazine is that the what what, what ICO produces yes um, so uh oh is, is Lynn going to pull it out. Oh no! I thought that you might have it. Um, no, sorry, so, but yeah. yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so, 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 um, uh, so the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma produces a, a magazine called Native Oklahoma, and so Mary Beth and, and Moonhawk Art, her her company, they produce cuff bracelets. They put their original artwork on tiles, shirts, different things like that. She had print advertising in their magazine. So when, uh, you know, so you have to think about where your target market uh, is, you know, who is your customer, uh, who is that avatar and where are they going to be, right? Because there are certain times, you know, like that is going to be a lot less expensive than if you were to go um, put a, a similar size ad, like in, you know, the New York Times, right? That's definitely going to be cost prohibitive. Or if you put it into a national run, uh, you know, a, a business magazine, that's going to be cost prohibitive, right? And, and, and you're going to be reaching a lot of people that aren't your target customer. But there may be times where you may find a radio show that everybody that listens to that radio show is your customer. You, and really what's happening now is that's happening with podcasts where you have these because podcasts it, where it takes time to produce a podcast, but those podcasts can be very niche content. Like there was a, a, a guy, yeah, and forget you, uh, for those of you that do not know, um, my wife runs a small horse boarding facility, okay? And so obviously we have people that where uh, they got to get their, their horses, uh, they, they call the farrier, the horseshoer comes and puts uh, shoes on horses. So there was a guy that would come here and while he was shoeing horses, he would be listening to a podcast all about horseshoeing, right? And so they've developed that content very specifically. So if you had a product that you were going to sell to farriers, right? Here's a really, uh, you know, almost a broadcast medium where you can really target who your customer is, right? And if you just put it on the regular radio station, you're going to reach a lot of people that aren't farriers, right? And the fact that there's not that many farriers, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. But when you go to, when you get something that's just right for your customer and, 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 and everybody that listens to that is your customer, um, it's going to be A, a lot less expensive. And, the, and, and, and the, there's the possibility to then, uh, you know, uh, you know, get ads on, on, on those specific things and make it uh, a good return on investment. Uh, for what you're doing. So, um, you know, and, and so, you know, what we're doing here is we're doing a, 
you know, we're, we're not trying to make you marketers. There's all kinds of different stuff. But what we want to do is we want to expose you to these different, uh, you know, these different categories so that you'll at least have the ability to say, OK, you know, I think that might work and it allows you to then go and, and, and investigate it. But I, uh, but I want to say, you know, there, there's a couple of things that you, you should always know, you know, need to know who your target market is. I'm just going to keep saying it. Uh, and you need to know what your return on investment is. You know, uh, you know, wh what's the, the profit you're going to make for every product that you sell? You know, what's the, the it's going to cost you to advertise so that you can estimate, uh, you know, am I going, if I go and place these ads and it costs me this amount, do I believe I'm going to sell enough of that product to, at the minimum, cover the cost of the ad and, and hopefully make an even bigger, pro, uh, uh, you know, uh, an even bigger uh, profit? Because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to expand our market. So, um, you know, let's talk. So can about I ask you a question, <clears throat> Mark, when you're talking about the return on investment when you're advertising? And I don't know if you're going to cover this. If you are, stop me. But ways that okay. you can track track that because I have some ideas if, unless, unless you plan on covering it. You, you know, I was going to mention it at the end, but if you have some ways right now, I think this is a good, a, a good time to jump in because I think it's a very important topic. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, how can I really track my return on this investment? How do I really know which of these methods of advertising that I'm using is really working? And so you could do things like, um, I, I love this, uh, the Facebook page for this hotel in Molokai, Hawaii, or Molokai, however you want to pronounce it, but uh, the Molokai Hotel does a Facebook page, and, and they do a lot of things like um, they partner with other businesses on the island. That's one, a great way to advertise is if you have somebody else in your community that has a product or service that's um, complimentary to yours that you it's called piggyback marketing and so you can actually join with those other people uh, to create some marketing campaigns and they do the hotel um, joins together with the local it's a mule tour it's like tour the world's highest sea cliffs I don't think I would ever do that on the back of a mule but anyway um, they they partner together and advertise that and one of the things I've noticed they do is on each one of their ads, they put a promo code so that if you book one of those uh, tours with um, the mule guide, then if you give them that promo code, then they know exactly like, oh, that came from that Facebook post that was posted that day. Um, and you've probably seen this in other advertising as well that you know people are like, use promo code, you know, 2020 to you know get 25% off. Um, so that's one way that you can track investment. So if you want to create a Facebook post, maybe you have a, a certain promo code that you're using for the Facebook post, but then if you also put it out on LinkedIn or, um, sorry, LinkedIn is not what I meant to say. I meant to say Instagram. <clears throat> then you can put a different pro 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 promo code there. Um, and be able to say, oh, well, which one of these am I getting more traffic from, Facebook or Instagram? Some other things that you could do is you can create um, like a, a special phone number and like Google phone numbers are so easy to get <laughs> and they're free. So if you want to say, oh, well, I'm going to track, you know, I'm going to advertise um, using this media and I'm going to use a certain phone number for it and I'll use a different phone number for this other media and just see which one's working for you and then another way that you can do that is also by if you have a website you can create landing pages and use specific landing pages for different media outlets that you're using so that's just one way that you're able to kind of track on whether a certain advertisement in a place is working for you or not. Yes, and it's, and it's and, you know very important to know the numbers. But I have a slide that I'm just going to show. It you'll see in a minute. It's it's just important to know uh, to know your numbers. And and so that and so that's one of the ways of uh, and you know the 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 methods Lynn just mentioned. That's what um, you know knowing when you make a sale, where that sale uh, comes from, right? You know the, the, those those are important things because otherwise 
you don't know that that sale, you might have made that sale regardless if you're advertising, right? So, um, so, so let's talk just real briefly about what your expectations are for advertising. I think everybody here is going to want, uh, let's see, um, well, actually, actually um, it was in a different train of thought. Um, so, uh, so these are expectations for your advertising it, it, as you are uh, creating uh, uh, your uh, your ad, what you're hoping to get out of your ad, and, and this is oftentimes with large uh, marketers, they're able to do a lot of these different, um, you know, the, the, these different types of advertising. I think for um, us as small uh, entrepreneurs, when we're uh, advertising, if we're going to engage in advertising, almost everything that we're going to want to do is activation. We're going to want to encourage people to come and use our product or purchase from us because we don't have enough money to spend on ads just to create brand awareness, right? That's something that you know, uh, automobile companies or, you know, um, you know, like a Procter and Gamble, those companies have tons and millions of dollars to spend to be able to say, hey, I, I really enjoy Tide, right? And so every time I go to the store, right? And that's also another thing is how often your product is going to be used, right? You're going to wash your clothes often, right? And so every time you go to the store, you, you might have to buy, you know, more detergent. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, Procter and Gamble, they want to get in your mind that Tide is the best detergent. And so what they're they're not really saying, hey, go get some Tide right now. They're not worried about that. What they want you to do is they want you to buy Tide for the rest of your life. Right. And so that's really creating that brand awareness in your mind. So uh, so some of the different uh, expectations you might have for advertising brand awareness, emotional bond. Uh, product news, you know, kind of finding out, you know, the, um, you know, what's going on, you know, with the product or in the industry activation, right? That's, that's encouraging uh, a customer to make a purchase, uh, developing loyalty. That's also a little bit, and a lot of times um, with uh, these different um, expectations, they're combined. So you're, you may be uh, trying to raise brand awareness, but you're also trying to increase loyalty at the same time. Um, you may also, um, uh, there's also experience and buzz and buzz is like, you know, just, um, let's say a new product is coming on the market. So you want to get people really excited and, and really anxious to get, the, uh, uh, to get these products. I just put these, be, um, on there because I, um, you know, because, uh, even though that you don't have a lot of money to engage in these these different expectations of advertising, right? Um, we're, we're probably gonna focus on activation at all times. I wanted to ask you, um, do you think uh, that you can do some of these things without advertising? And, and, and how, you got, how, you might, how you might go about doing it? Uh, Mark, I, I was just wondering about um, you know, like for a newspaper, a local newspaper, if you ever approached one of their reporters for an interview and, you know, you might have a niche um, product or a niche clientele and, and you're interesting and you're unusual or something special that would make their um, newspaper just a little bit nicer looking instead of just being negative all the time. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought about that. And, and that would be free. That would, yes. I... Yeah, so, so, so that's called public relations. Uh, uh, Len's about to talk about that. Oh, so, oh, oh okay. I won't, I won't um, rain on her parade. <laughs> no, no, no but, but Anna Maria, no, that's very good because if, uh, you know, I, I'll just use like an example, like, you know, let's say there's going to be a new yogurt store in town. There's something, you know, a new store, right? On a very micro level, just looking at, at a town, you know, going and approaching the local paper, maybe the local radio station, the local TV station, and, and that can generate buzz, right? And so even though you're not placing an advertisement by using those PR 
uh, sources, you know, those public relations sources, you can generate buzz. See, so there's ways to be, uh, to, so you don't just have to be thinking about ways that I can promote myself through advertising. That's the only way that I can, uh, you know, develop these different expectations. There's other ways and some free ways. Now, when you're paying for it, it's a lot easier, right? And a lot quicker. Because obviously, if you got to convince the person that's the TV reporter to come interview, if they don't find that you're exciting, well, I mean, you're, you're stuck, right? I mean, there may only be one TV station in, in, in your community, maybe none, right? And so you may be very limited. So it is, and it's a more, uh, you know, um, a more uh, time intensive thing, right? Where you're not spending the money, but you're spending your effort. Um, but it is possible. I think another way to generate buzz is social media, right? That's an, a, another, uh, uh, you know, cheap or, in, you know, inexpensive. You're just spending your time to do that. Um, you know, another thing, experience is, uh, you know, you want to get your customers using your products. Um, and so, so what's the way that you could do that? Now, you, you could uh, put on a big event and do a lot of event advertising. But you may uh, even like, uh, I remember that my friend used to work at a pizza parlor uh, and it was a take and bake pizza. But what they did is they had a propane oven uh, that they could just wheel outside their, their store and they would, uh, they would bake their take and bake pizzas and they would cut them up and they would give them away as people pass by, right? That, and so that's sampling, right? And, and so, you know, so you can give people samples and right, it only costs you the cost of that food. Um, so the, uh, that's, uh, I think it's also important to be thinking about, um, uh, if you want to reach these different aims that advertising can get, get to you, but you don't have the money to engage in advertising, there may be ways to also, um, uh, to also accomplish these goals, but you have to be creative about it. I do also want to say that we do want to, you know, uh, realize that it does take a, a great amount of time and you're doing your business or you're doing your art and you may not have the time. So you just got to do the best that you can and, and you know, you know, oh, and try a little bit. And, and, and my it, when you watch that video that I uh, that I made uh, on the price and place, one of the things I talk about in there is experimentation. So try something you know, say, hey, you know, can I try to generate some PR? And, and, and if it works, uh, you know, great. If it doesn't work, you know, try something else, but always be experimenting in your business with any of these things. I think that's the best solution where you can find a workable, uh, a, a workable way to, um, you know, generate a more buzz or brand awareness, whatever you're hoping to do for your business. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I came up with this thing with advertising messages. This will be in the slides. So uh, I'm not going to uh, go in because there's just so much uh, that we can uh, talk about. And I mean, we could just spend the whole class on advertising and then, then we, uh, you know, then we won't have time for any of the other stuff that we want to show you. But I'm going to leave you with this, this last point. Make sure you're able to measure and show a positive return on investment, right? So just like Lynn talked about, you want to be able to find where your customers are coming from um, as you do advertisements. You want to have some sort of tracking me mechanism. You want to know what the it costs to do your um, advertisements, and you want to know what the uh, it, uh, what the profit is in your product that you're selling, so that you can sh uh, can demonstrate to yourself that uh, you are making a profit on the advertising that you're um, engaging in, or you're not making uh, a profit. So sometimes, you know, uh, with uh, some of these things like brand awareness, uh, the goal is not to make a profit, but I think as a small entrepreneurs, we always have to be thinking about that because we don't have a ton of money. Just, you know, and when we spend advertising dollars, they need to come back and provide um, increased sales for us. Uh, well, one other thing that I wanted to do before I turn it over to Lynn, I'm going to see if I can pull this up real quick. So one of the things I, I did want to show you guys is um, how we're doing a little bit of advertising. What we primarily do is we do Facebook uh, advertising, um, you know, something that's real targeted. The reason that we do Facebook advertising is because, um, first, that's where uh, most of our clientele is, right? If they're going to be on a social media channel, they're going to be on Facebook. Um, more and more, we do have people on Instagram, 
But the nice thing about Instagram is it's also owned by Facebook. So we can often do a lot of times when we're doing Facebook advertising, it's transferring over and it's also advertising on Instagram as well. Um, one of the things that we can't do, and, and, and because our organization only serves Native, uh, you know, Native American entrepreneurs and artists, we don't want to go out to the general community. I mean, uh, when we go out and if we just put something like in a local newspaper and we said, hey, we're here to provide training and technical assistance, we're going to get a lot of people who are non-native that are calling us and we don't want that. So what we're always trying to do when we do advertising is to be as targeted as possible. And I think that's one of the nice things about what social media has done is it has allowed us to be very targeted. So um, I'll show you. So when we're creating an ad, and so um, actually, so so how you would typically create an ad, let's say I wanna come down here. So today we recorded a video for uh, those in California. I think I see Alex, I thought I saw Alex in the room. I think Alex is here. Uh, so Alex was on our webinar earlier today. So we did a training for, um, there's a grant program here in California for micro enterprises, and I did a, a session on it. So let's say I wanted to promote this uh, to uh, to have people watch this and and call us in case um, uh, you know uh, and, and call us so they can get help right and increase our numbers right. So so one of the things is we uh, I want to be before I even start thinking about placing the ad. What am I trying to do? What's that purpose, right? It's going back to that slide. Am I trying to create brand awareness? Am I trying to get people to do something? Um, like in this case, we generally, when we're doing these advertisements, um, uh, oftentimes we're advertising a training and we're trying to get people to actually sign up for the training, right? That activation. So even when we're spending our advertising dollars, that's what we're really focused on, okay? So uh, so let's say, I, but uh, I want people to actually call us uh, so that we could help them walk through the application process for this. So I, I would hit boost, uh, boost this post. I've already uh, opened it up over here. This is what uh, the back end, if you've never placed a Facebook page. And this is how I typically do our ad placements with uh, Facebook. I'm uh, There's all different ways that you can do um, uh, uh, Facebook advertising, but generally um, what I have found is I'm just using the, the boost post. It's easiest for me and I don't have to be a super marketer and I only have such limited time to, to do this. I, I want to find, you know, what's the quickest, uh, you know, not the cheapest, but, you know, an inexpensive way to get the message out. So um, the different options they give you. So first of all, uh, because I'm boosting a post, the post stays the same. Um, they allow you to change your goal. And because I'm not real, uh, you know, I, I'm not a super marketer, I just uh, allow uh, uh, Facebook to change uh, my goal. But if I wanted to, uh, I can actually say, hey, I, I want more people to view my video, or I want to get more calls, or I want to get uh, messages like, uh, you know, text messages. And uh, it, it, Facebook knows who their customers are, you know, you know, Mark Zuckerberg knows everything about you. Um, and so, um, you know, they're, they're, they have a ways that they're going to feed those ads to people who are most likely to do that. Um, then we come down, down here and we have, you know, what, 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 you know, what are we wanting people to do? If it's just watch the video, we probably don't uh, want to have a button. But if we want people to actually, let's say, uh, contact us for technical assistance, I might actually, you know, uh, have a button here where, let's see, I, you know, uh, I may have something to say, learn more, um, or I might have something to say, well, I don't think I can change it here, but, um, you know, like one thing I might say is get help or sign up, right? And then I can uh, change where they go. I can send them to my Facebook Messenger, or I could send them to um, uh, our website. And then if I'm sending them to the website, one of the things that you always want to do when you're sending somebody uh, to, if you're going to place an ad and you're going to send somebody, I know this seems complicated, but you want to send them to a place where they can take action. So if I was ever sending people uh, to uh, our website, I'm never sending them to just our website. I would send them to a sign up form to where they can immediately put their name in and get help. What I'm often doing when I'm doing these, um, uh, when I'm placing these ads is I'm sending them directly to the Zoom form um, that, and that when you guys signed up, you actually signed up through IAIA. 
typically when we're doing these workshops, we have a Zoom registration page and I would be sending them to that Zoom registration page. So if they're interested and they're like, oh yeah, I wanna watch this, they can click that and immediately sign up, right? So um, there's a special ad category. They're doing this to help prevent them discrimination, but we don't have that. But the, what I really wanted to show you in here is this targeting. And this is the beauty of using um, the, the, using Facebook and this social media, this new digital advertising, because you can really target your customers. So you can target your customers um, by people that like your page, people uh, you like their page and their friends. You can do it by um, you know where they're located. Um, I have no idea why there's, uh, right now they're suggesting that I get somebody around Plymouth where I'm located, but they also are interested in Nasty Gal, Complex, Fenty Beauty, Date Night Road Trip, Mary J. Blige, Aero Postel, or Personal Development. That's a very odd mix. I have no idea where that came up with. Anyway, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna... I was wondering, I wasn't going to say anything and I was uh, like, what? Uh, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know how, how that got, um, but I'm going to actually show you um, uh, categories that we have been using. So I uh, typically market to different states because we have a funding in different states. So I will typically market to different states. So um, I'm going to show you our old, uh, uh, you know, our old kind of uh, target uh, market that we had. So here would be Nevada. Um, I would have, uh, so just searching in Nevada. So if you lived outside of Nevada, you wouldn't get my ad. Um, we had a, an, an age of 20 to 65. We found a lot of people who were, uh, you know, around 18. They just weren't really interested. So we tried to make it a little bit older. Um, and then uh, Facebook allows you to put interests. So what, uh, as we mentioned, we're, we're trying to target only Native entrepreneurs, right? So that's what we were focused on. So we would have things in there like Native American church, Native American culture, Native American jewelry. You couldn't just put Native American. They wouldn't allow you to do that. So what we're trying to do is try to find interests that um, Facebook allows you to put that would target only uh, Native, uh, you know, Native American entrepreneurs, right? So Native American studies. Then we would also put people that like IDRS, right? So if they've already liked our page, we, we know they're probably you know, fans or they're our target demographic. They're friends. So if you've liked our page, you're most likely you know, gonna be very similar uh, or the friends of the people who are connected to IDRS. Uh, and, and IDRS has, uh, or Facebook has different ways of connecting. You can both like and follow. So that was just another way of people that were interested in IDRS and reaching out to people that they were connected with. But as you notice, there's these errors that are now placed there. Because uh, Facebook was getting so much heat and targeting um, different ethnicities. And really what it is, is it's discrimination on things like housing. So you, uh, before you could actually put an advertisement and you could exclude people. And so you could exclude and, and go through, like, let's say you're, uh, wanted to exclude African-Americans from seeing your housing ad. You could actually exclude like, and you would put things like jet magazine, uh, you know, anything that African, you know, the NAACP, uh, you know, African-American church, all these different things that you could put. And then that's going to eliminate a lot of people that you didn't want to see your, uh, your, um, your housing ad. Well, that's discrimination, right? And so what they've done is they have tried to eliminate a, a lot of those things. And so uh, my most recent ad, so I advertised for, um, uh, to get uh, for that webinar I did today, I did an advertisement. And so they've taken away Native American culture. Uh, they've taken away um, uh, the Native American church. So now I'm just down to Native American jewelry and Native American studies. Um, we had pretty good results. And uh, so and, and, and let, let me just finish up. So you, you just click that. It, 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 um, and then you can come down here and set a price. It tells you based on your budget, how many people that they believe you'll reach, how many link clicks that you'll get. And this is per day. And then you can come down here. I just have a couple things blocked off. I didn't, if, when this gets posted to YouTube, I didn't want my credit card uh, on, on for everybody to see. So I bored that out. And then you just hit boost and it goes into a review and now it's, a, it's up and now you have a, a, an ad. And so you really didn't have to be a super marketer. 
You didn't have to learn a whole, you know, a giant system. You just had to really think about, okay, who do I want to see my ad? Where do I want them? Like, you know, um, you know, like obviously I'm targeting via geography. I'm targeting via interests. I'm targeting via age. And you'll probably want to do the same. That's why it's very important. Like Lynn said in session two, right? Knowing who your avatar is because you're able to now build your avatar right here when you're doing this uh, targeted marketing. And then afterwards, right? Like you just saw my slide talking about making sure that you know your return on investment. So you can come here and let's see here. This is going to be, uh, this is four that I did for this, uh, the webinar currently. And so what they will tell you is, um, you know, how much you spent. So the ad, it's finishing up today. So I, I put uh, $25 on it. Uh, and so it hasn't spent out all that money, but I got 53 link clicks. We reached uh, 1400 people. The cost per link uh, click was a 44 cents. And then it gives you some of these other things, right? And, and as you get to, uh, as you get to use this advertising, you'll get to see, okay, was this ad good? hiding my credit card information again. And, you know, and it tells you, you know, kind of the, um, you know, what the ad was about, right? Um, so, uh, and, and then what, what uh, you know, you're not gonna have this on your first ad you place, but when you have multiple ads, then you can kind of come back and compare how do other ads, uh, you know, have done. So here's another ad that I uh, did earlier. And this was on, Oh, this was on the, um, the California relief grant. So this would have been to California last year on a different grant program. And so I spent $26 over 13 days. So I had a much longer time window. I only got 42 clicks. And so you could see my cost per link click was, was more. Um, and then this allows you to go back and examine, okay, what, you know, so why was this more? Was this was also for a grant program. So, cause I did have, when I do trainings, I've seen that the training, the cost per link click is around a dollar. So you actually, you know, people aren't as interested as when you say you have free money for them, right? People get a little bit more excited for that. Um, another thing that it, uh, it may uh, have happened is this was much later on in the grant program. And so people that were really interested, they may have already taken advantage of it, right? And so I was trying to get those people that, you know, were kind of like the, the stragglers behind but a lot of my audience had already gone and um, had already taken advantage. The customers that wanted to take advantage had already taken advantage, right? And so I wasn't getting all, uh, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't like the first time that they saw this. And, and that's what we're talking about when we're looking at the return on investment. And, and then we can go and say, okay, if I had a goal, if I said, you know, I need to have 20 people in a webinar that I was doing, right? So when, uh, so when I was running this webinar, um, I only had, uh, as a yesterday, uh, let me see, I think as a two days ago or three days ago, I only had, I want to say eight people registered. It may, it may have only been six people registered from this ad. Even though we had a lot of link clicks, we didn't have a lot of registered. Um, so what they could have been doing is I also put a, a link in here to our informational page. So they could have been going there. Um, but also another thing I'm also um, sensing and you know, and I'll know more as it goes along is by them removing some of those categories um, is my ad not being delivered to who I want it to be. So, so as you can see, this is how we start examining, we start thinking about an ads. And these, this is very simple to do. You know, I'm, I'm you know, Lynn, I just apologize. I'm taking way too much time, but I just, you know, oh, no, I it's okay. Hey, I mean, this, to me, this is very interesting and it's useful because so many people use Facebook but they, they are not using it to its full ability and looking at the analytics, because looking at this, you can definitely see, um, you know, you're seeing are people that responded men, are they women, what age groups were responding. So that way, whenever you're developing some kind of advertising, that's another way you could say, okay, you know, gosh, I didn't really create this. I was trying to, you know, get women interested, you know, and look at all these men, <laughs> you know, so you can then go back and say, okay, am I really, is, is my ad hitting who I'm wanting it to hit? Um, and so you have some great demographic information there. And I was actually going to ask you if you don't care if we have time, if we could go to our analytics page, which kind of shows us like, 
who's following us. Um, oh, oh, do you Facebook? have that? Because oh, I know, on like on, because I know, like on Mary Beth's uh, Facebook page for her her business page, that um, we can go in there and look at the analytics and see like who her followers are, which to me is another great way to um, determine who your target audience might be if you don't know already. You want me to pull that up now? Yeah, I mean, if you don't care, since we're already here. And again, uh, like, I just think that, you know, with these social media platforms, there's these analytical tools that that not everyone thinks about um, or realizes that they're there. So, you know, the problem is, is I never know how to get to a place when I want to get to it. Oh, uh, it's OK. <laughs> no worries. But do know that if you have a Facebook business page, that there is a place that you can go in there and you can see, well, who, who are the people following me? Are they men? Are they women? What age groups are they in? Um, and I can't remember what other information it gave. It may have also given like location, some location information. But Oh, oh you know what, Lynn, hold so. on. I went into the, the, the business suite and I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm where I need to be. So it may look a little different because I know I think I know what the page you're talking about, but this also gives you similar information. So um, I think you're looking for like the audience, right? Right. Did you want me to talk about it or are you, you going to? Oh, and it has our Instagram. It has our Instagram on there too. Yeah. So you can even see kind of a comparison of... Um, of who our, our Facebook followers are and then who our Instagram followers are. And I am not at all surprised that it's mostly women because even whenever we do training, we're usually about set up, the people that attend our training, about 70 to 75% of them are women. And, and, and look what, um, when we look at the top cities here, so we have Hoopa, but we, we've done some work with um, uh, Nimipu Community Development Fund. And so we have a lot of people that like us from Idaho. Well, one of the problems is, is um, besides working with uh, uh, Nimipu, we don't have money to work in Idaho. And so if this is just, if you're not targeting your ad, if we were just putting it just to our friends um, and, and we were trying to like develop a training in California, a lot of that money is just going to be wasted because look, I'm going to be uh, uh, informing uh, Idaho about our training and New York about our training and Nevada about our training. So that's, that, that's why it's important to kind of look at these, right? If I wanted men to come out, well, we have a problem right here because we have a lot of women. So we don't want to just go over to our audience. We want to target that audience and make sure only men receive that ad. So. All right. Um, Lynn, do you want to take a, a, a break right now and then come back and, and start on public relations? Since sure, already, yeah, we can do that. Since we're already at 6.30. I, I, I hope this was informational to everybody. You know, we, we wanted to at least show everybody kind of what this, you know, we just want to kind of give you a feel of how we're using advertising because we don't want to just say it and then, you know, and, and think that we're, that we're not doing any of this stuff. We don't do a lot of advertising. We do a lot of promotions but this is primarily how we're doing advertising. So we at least wanted to show it, show this to you guys. Okay, I got it set for five minutes. Okay, I don't have music today. So um, I'll, I'll just be singing, not just joking. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys back here in five minutes.
Okay, our time is up. If anyone can hear me, we're going to go ahead and get started back. Since Mark is controlling the slides, he probably went to go grab him some coffee. So we'll give him a second to get back. I have the question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, th this question is um, was for the advertising. So okay, if you're Alex, advertising um, becomes successful and you're getting, you know, overwhelmed with uh, um, selling your product or whatever, you can, um, well, well, do you have, you know, you have to adjust your uh, prices because, you know, if it's more, you know, you have more, you know, it's more demand for your work. And um, how's that? What, what, what do you think about that? Well, I would definitely say that if you have so much demand for your work that it's hard for you to keep up with it and you're becoming overwhelmed that it is very likely that you could, that you, you should look at increasing your prices. Um, definitely for sure. Um, you know, not, or, you know, the other thing that you could do is if you were like, oh, I really don't want to increase my prices, but I'm getting overwhelmed is, you know, kind of pull back on some of the advertising that you're doing. Um, and not do quite so much of it, but it's a good problem to have. Um, and a lot of people think, wow, that, how can that be a problem? But it can, if you're, you know, if you're not able to keep up with the demand, then that can quickly become a problem because then, you know, you may end up start slipping in other areas, like not being able to deliver good customer service. You may be behind on uh, getting people the products uh, that they're wanting. So if you do find yourself in that situation, and, and it may not just be one strategy, right? It may not be raising your prices and pulling back from some of your other advertising. It may be a combination of both. Does that help you out, Alex? And if you do have that problem, congratulations. It, it's a good problem to have, but you're right. It can be a problem if you don't get it under control. Okay, any other questions up to this point? Okay, then I guess we will go ahead and get started back with class and we're gonna talk about public relations now. And I believe it was Anna Maria that brought up public relations before. And you know, we often think about public relations as um, kind of being free advertising, but public relations, it definitely can, it does include that, but public relations is really, you know, a much bigger, broader area. And Mark, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to put it to the, to the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. I got one. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so, you know, when I think about public relations, I really think about two primary types. One is owned media. So those are the things that are within our control. And I think that is probably the most important, right? Because we are in control of it. So we can control how our uh, brand and how our business is um, displayed to the community, to our customers that we're trying to reach. And some of those things that we could use are obviously our social media posts. So if you have a social media channel, that to me right now is like probably one of the, the, the best places that you can do public relations for your business. And it's not all about selling. It's about, um, you know, building trust and relationships with people. And I'll tell you, like, there's this one company here. Uh, it, it's called Mullen Plumbing. And one thing I love about this company is that they do they do a lot of really good PR tactics. Uh, one thing that they do is oftentimes in the winter time, 
they do like TV commercial advertising. It's like a huge business. Actually, the owner is uh, one of our congressmen. <laughs> Mark Wayne Mullen uh, is the one that owns it. But one thing that they'll do whenever the weather is getting cold is they'll actually have TV advertising that says, hey, the weather is getting cold, you know, to avoid having to hire us to come in and fix your frozen pipes. Here are some tips that you can do. And so they're actually going out and giving information to people that can help them uh, not need any kind of plumbing services. And that really, to me, builds a lot of trust. He does it not only on TV, but he also through their Facebook page. So, uh, so doing using things like social media is a great way to build public relations with your people. Uh, blog content, if you are somebody that likes to blog, I, I, I'm not a big writer myself, but definitely there's, I do like to, you know, read some blogs once in a while. So that is a great place, again, to just give information about your company, let people get to know you a little bit more on a personal level. Website copy, definitely, you know, if you have a website for your business, again, this is owned by you, you have total control of it. So whatever you say through these channels um, is, is how you want people to view your company. Email newsletters are another way. But there are, you know, as kind of Anna Maria hinted to earlier, there's what we call earned media. And so this is stuff that we don't have control over it. But it is arguably probably one of the um, best ways to build, you know, uh, to build our business reputation. And that's through things like, you know, if we get mentioned in the local news, so your local newspaper writes a story about your business or on social media, you know, you provide a service uh, to a customer and they thought it was awesome. And so they're on social media praising you. And then on uh, through other media things, again, this could be through your local newspaper, it could be through another organization, maybe they're posting something about your business on social media. So two things, the own media and the earned media. Um, again, own media is probably really most important for you to focus on just because you have total control of it. But definitely the earned media is probably the best way to to really build the reputation for you and your business. And let's look at a different ways that, um, that we can take advantage of, especially the earned media. Uh, Mark, go ahead and flip it to the next slide, please. Okay. Oh, I, I, um, oh hold on. Uh, it, uh, I, I keep thinking I'm muted. Um, I have all these uh, like in, in an animation. You just want me to bring them all up on screen? Yeah, go ahead and just bring them all in. That's okay. 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 But if you are looking for um, free ways to advertise, advertise your business, to build relationships with people in the community that's, you know, that is kind of under that earned media category, you know, here are some good ways to do it. Number one is to attend business events because people, the business owners who are really involved in their community, and get out and network are the people that are going to do better. And, uh, you know, for me, I like getting out and networking. I think as I get older, I shy away from it a little bit for, for whatever reason. Now, my husband, he's a business owner in the community and he does not like to socialize. So you cannot get him to go to business events very easily. But uh, from someone that has been involved in the community myself and working with a lot of small businesses in the area, I can tell you that, you know, some of the most successful businesses in our community are ran by people who are out there hustling and meeting other people and letting people get to know them. So any kind of business event, it could be a chamber of commerce meeting. So if you're uh, lucky enough to, that your community has a chamber of commerce, I would definitely say that should probably be at the top of your list to get involved in. Uh, there's other things like community relations. Uh, one thing that my husband did do several years ago when I was working at the university, I talked him into this. He actually sat on the board for our local big brothers and uh, big sisters organization. So getting involved in your community through different philanthropic organizations and events is another great way to 
really showcase your business, let people, you know, get to know you a little bit better. And again, this just brings good publicity to you because it's building trust that people are saying, hey, this business owner really cares about us. They care about our community and they're willing to get involved. When we talk about corporate and social responsibility, it could be anywhere from, you know, maybe you support some kind of cause and a percentage of your sales goes to uh, benefit some kind of corporate or um, uh, social movement that's, you know, helping the environment or helping a specific group of people. But it can also be that perhaps your product or your service is doing things in its daily businesses daily business practices that is making it socially responsible. So again, I think about my husband here because he does landscaping and lawn care. So one thing that he might be able to do is use making sure that he's using environmentally friendly products, making sure that he's advertising that. I was working with a young lady that was doing a cleaning service and that was something else that, you know, she and I had talked about that a lot of her customers, you know, really are environmentally conscious. And so she wanted to make sure that she was always using really good um, cleaning products that were going to be friendly to the environment. So though that, you know, you think you almost don't think that these things are public relations, but it is. So public relations is a lot of all these different components that you're putting together. It's not just free advertising. It goes well beyond that. It goes, it's all about how you position yourself as an individual and how you position your company um, and expose yourself to your customers. Uh, media relations. So we did talk about press releases. Let me tell you, as Anna Maria pointed out, especially if you live in one of these smaller communities that have a local newspaper, they are dying for content. And a lot of times, you know, they're having to go out and maybe seek content from, um, from the national area or whatever. But if you have any kind of interesting story, perhaps you're starting a new business, that is newsworthy. If you have, in fact, I remember one time we had a business here in the community. It was called Make It Special. So it was kind of like one of those gift shop and they did, um, you know, if, you, if it was someone's birthday, you could go there and buy balloons. Well, one time they sent all of their staff to become a, uh, certified balloon artist you know those people that can like make animals and stuff out of balloons and they wrote a press release to our local newspaper and the newspaper actually highlighted it that you know these people became uh, balloon artists so that that was interesting my husband actually did um, get some PR coverage one time because he and his father built a water feature at the ballpark here in our community. And so the newspaper came out, did a really nice story on my husband's and his dad's business, you know, uh, showcasing the water feature and they got a ton of business from that. So, um, you know, if there's something that you can do in your community that is, uh, can be beneficial like that, that's really going to be good publicity um, uh, for you and your business. Social media, you know, we talked about social media just a moment ago, how you can, um, how you can put out content that, that is of good nature to your customers. But here's something I also want to point out is that you need to be paying attention to what people are saying about you on social media. And one of my big pet peeves is if someone is bragging about a business and that business doesn't say anything. And I remember case in point, my internet provider, um, they have really pretty good service. You know, we have some disruptions, obviously, because we're out in a rural area sometimes, but really these people provide really good service. And I remember one day being on their Facebook page and someone had posted, you know, something very nice. Hey, I love you guys. Y'all have great service. I can't believe that in a rural community we can get service this great. And that company never responded to them. And to me, that's almost like you walking up and telling someone thank you and them just looking at you and not saying anything back. So just remember that about social media is that it is 
uh, two-way communication. And so if you see anyone talking about you, about your business on social media, and they're saying nice things, make sure and respond and let you know, let them know that you appreciate that. If they happen to be saying something bad about you, know that that's probably an also good, uh, a good time that you're going to need to respond, but you need to be careful how you respond. Uh, so I will give you this tip. So if you do have a face, like a Facebook business page, whatever, social media, and you have someone that is upset with you and has come and posted uh, something negative on your social media, never engage that person in any kind of negative conversation. Just reply to them and say, you know, I'm so sorry you had this bad experience. Why don't you private message me and, you know, let me figure out a way to um, to make this up to you. So you want to make sure that you're taking that conversation offline as soon as you can, but making sure that you do let other people see that, hey, you, you know, you did respond and you're going to try to help that customer with whatever issue that they had. So those are the big things that I have about public relations. Um, I think, did I have some more slides? Oh, I did have some more slides, Mark. So go ahead and flip. And I'll just give you some examples of some different things that I've seen. So this is a Cherokee business that started, a, a Cherokee man, he started a his little wine business. And so again, like our Cherokee Phoenix highlighted him. And this is part of a much bigger newspaper story that they did. So again, if you're starting a new business, fantastic time to send a press release out to your, uh, whether it's your tribal newspaper or a community newspaper or wherever. Uh, another example, go ahead and flip it to the next one, Mark. Uh, here's a small business owner that was recognized because they were trying to help the library get more people sign up for a library card. And so this local business owner decided to give away a hamburger combo to anybody that came into the library and got their library card. So, you know, that was a really great public relations uh, thing that they did that was very helpful to their community and they got some great coverage out of it. And another one that I noticed here in my own community um, they weren't really, you know, they didn't give any kind of product or anything away, but they, we did have a young man in our community that wanted to go to West Point and he had been having trouble, you know, with the, um, with the physical part of it, because, you know, you have to, um, do the, the, the physical test, whatever it's called anyway. So our local gym here, um, actually, got together with some other people, including some other people in our area that were West Point graduates, and really all came together as a community to help this young man um, build up what he needed to so he could pass the physical assessment and get into West Point. So I thought that was pretty cool. Didn't cost them, you know, any money or anything, but was just a really good way to show how this business, you know, cared about one of our young people and stepped in to try to help them out however they could. So there's all kinds of opportunities for your business to, you know, do public relations again, whether you're using your own media and creating good content or going out and earning that um, recognition in your community through all different kinds of ways. And I am putting on the class website, if you guys have never written a press release, there are kind of a certain format that you need to follow. It's not hard, but I'm actually posting some templates down there. Like if you're starting a new business, I have a new template. So I have a template for, you know, a few different kind of public, uh, public releases that you'll be able to use. That's what I have on public relations, Mark. Okay, no, great. I, I, I think that, that's awesome. I, you know, and, and I would encourage people, I think a lot of people don't think they have something that is um, worthwhile. Newsworthy. People, yeah, newsworthy. But there's so many, I mean, it, like artists have so much gallery opening um, that they're, uh, they're paintings in a museum. If they're a dancer and they do an exhibition, they participate in something, you know, anything that they do in the non-native community, their, uh, you know, their tribal publications are going to want to promote that. So 
just so much, so much. So, all righty. Well, uh, thank you very much, Lynn. We will roll on. There is so much that we could talk about. I mean, like just this section alone, I have three sections that I'm supposed to be uh, keeping it to 20 minutes and I've already cut into Lynn's time. So I'm going to try because she has another section that she also has to talk about. So I'm going to try to 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 move move uh, quickly. Um, so Lynn mentioned uh, she has been talking about a website uh, and she, uh, we had, uh, she had done a class on website development. So I'm not going to go too much into website uh, development. But what I wanted to say is because interactive media, what that is, or interactive promotions, it's where your potential customer can interact with you. And I think we can kind of see, whereas if you're watching TV it's uh, and you see an advertisement come on, it's basically one direction, right? The, the, um, that, that a company is telling you something, there's no way for you to respond back to them. But you can, but when you have a website, right, you could click on things, you're going, you're searching, it's an active process, right? The company has put information up there, and then the customer is going and it's exploring and it's informing itself and finding more of what it wants to learn. Okay, so uh, so I just wanted to tell you why having a website is important because I know so many people are relying on social media and, and, you know, maybe they start a Facebook page, maybe it's just their profile, but I want to encourage you to have a website because it's, um, you know, because I think it's very important. First of all, you know, it's a 24-7 information portal on the internet, right? So, uh, you, I mean, uh, you know, basically, and, and the second point, you own it, right? So you can put whatever you want on there, how to contact you. Uh, you know, if, if you have a product, uh, you know, what's customer support? I know that uh, Nisha is in here and she has a, um, a tattoo business, right? Uh, you know, have a, an FAQ page up there about how to take care of their tattoo, you know, when it's done and they leave uh, the, um, you know, they, they leave the shop just in case they're having trouble and she's not available. All that information can be up there on a page, right? It helps with brand awareness. Anytime somebody searches, right, um, by having a website, uh, there's the possibility that your website will get fed to somebody in search. You know, the fact that you have a website, it shows professionalism and credibility. And what and one of the real uh, key things, you know, so we've talked about advertising and spending money and trying to generate customers. Um, Having a website is one of the lowest cost per impression um, promotions that you can do because it's always there. And maybe you spend some time and some money getting it built the first time. But from there on, you know, you maybe do some updates. But for a lot of people's website, you don't really change that much. But it just sits there all the time, always promoting you. So it's really a, you know, it, it's really a great always on advertising vehicle. You know, um, and, and, and a lot of people, when they start the, um, uh, the, the shopping process, some people go to Facebook, you know, some people may go uh, somewhere else, but a lot of people are still going, I would say most consumers are still going and using their search engine and that's where they start, right? And if the, what's the search engine gonna, gonna serve up? They're gonna serve up a, a website, right? Uh, most of those um, a search, like with Google, they're not, they may show a Facebook page, but that's not what they, that, you know, they don't want to drive money in the Mark Zuckerberg's pockets, right? So they would rather show a Facebook and, 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 and uh, de-emphasize um, uh, Facebook pages. So be thinking about that, right? Uh, uh, the best way to, to have your, your bite at the apple when people are doing a search is to have your website. So how do you get a website? There's lots of free options, uh, Google Sites, Blogger, uh, there's platforms where you have to pay every month, like Wix and Squarespace. Um, depending on, on the type of store, or excuse me, the type of thing that you want to do with your website, like let's say you want to do a store, they have things like Shopify and Big Cartel. You know, if, if you want to be real tech savvy, I know Lynn absolutely hates WordPress, so I like to add it in every, uh, in every presentation that we do about website development, but you know, there's a WordPress that can be a little bit more uh, techy. You can hand code it, you know, with HTML or PHP, those are just coding languages. You can even hire somebody, right? And obviously as you go down, it tends to get more technologically advanced, maybe more expensive, but it doesn't have to be. But even having a simple website up is, is very important. So I, I just wanted to plug that for, for websites. 
something that is um, in a similar vein uh, to websites is content marketing. And so here's another type of promotion. Now, uh, essentially content marketing is just where you're providing information that the customer is interested in, right? And then by them doing that, you're acquiring an audience or you're driving people to do something, maybe take action, maybe buy a product or get interested in a product or you're building that brand awareness, right? Here's another way that you're uh, meeting some of those advertising objectives, but you're doing it in a free way. OK, so, um, you know, and, and, and we last class, we talked about social media. You know, social media is just one form of content marketing, right? You're creating all that content that goes up there. That could be images. That could be your post. You, you know, it, you guys are all have all used social media. So you see all the different forms of media that goes up there. That's that's content marketing. But content marketing can be a lot more uh, than just social media. So different forms of content. We have things like, uh, you know, social media posts, just mentioned that, but blog posts, uh, videos, uh, eBooks, right? And there are things that maybe uh, that people can download, um, infographics. Um, if, uh, if you have a customer that really likes what they've done or have given you a testimonial, you can turn that into a piece of content. Even using influencers, and we don't have to be uh, you talk about big influencers. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm going to show my age, but I think there's a, in the TikTok world there's a Charlie D'Amelio. Um, and I know she's a big TikToker. If you guys are on TikTok, you don't have to go to Charlie to you know you don't have to look at the influencers. Who are the influence? Or you don't have to look at the big influencers. Who are the target uh, for or for who are the people that are your target market? Who do they listen to? Who are they influenced? What are they watching? What are they reading? Those are the influencers that you want to get. Maybe they are going to Charlie, right? That's going to be pretty expensive, but probably, probably not, you know, you're probably not going to get in front of Charlie. But if you're in a very niche uh, uh, area, like we talked about that farrier earlier, right? It, it, you can reach out and it might be extremely affordable to get in front of that audience or get an influencer to mention your product or to talk about how much they like you as an artist and and drive traffic to you. Uh, OK, so as I'm saying, you know, so where is your target market? Um, another thing that I would say is you don't have to engage in everything. Right. We don't want to, uh, you know, just like advertising, we don't want to overwhelm you. Um, but we just want to give you options so that you never get stuck, right? So that you can say, okay, well, I'm doing social media and it's okay, but, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time there or, you know, I don't even like doing social media. I don't like being always on, you know, there's other things that you can do. And this is just kind of a list that says, okay, well, if you don't like social media, maybe you should try blogs. Oh, I don't like writing. Okay. Maybe I should do video, right? Um, so di there's different uh, different things that you could be doing, okay? Um, there's also different strategies for different types of content, right? And how it's gonna promote or what works best. Um, but one of the cool things with a, a lot of these things is content can be repurposed, right? So you could have an ebook, you know, and that's what some of the people, well, we're gonna talk about email here in just a second. And one of the things is um, we've talked about, uh, or we haven't talked about, but I've seen, uh, one of the things that people say is develop something like an ebook. That's a great way to be a lead magnet to generate uh, an email list, right? People see, hey, I want this book, and they they get that. Well, not everybody can produce an ebook, but let's say you have produced an ebook, or there's something that, that people want to download, right? You could take a portion of that ebook. Maybe it's a chapter. Maybe it's a couple paragraphs. Those can be social media posts. You could even do a take um, maybe one chapter and that becomes a blog post. So you can see how that content can be repurposed. And actually, what for people that really did a lot of informational blog posts, what they would do is actually just put all those blog posts together into uh, a book, right? And they would just basically PDF all those together and then give that as a lead magnet. And that was, and people would find value so they wouldn't have to click on every single. Uh, you know, web page, they can just download the whole thing. But then what you're having them do is give you an email every time. So there's lots of different ways um, to do um, to do content. So you do the one that that works uh, best for you guys. So let me ask you, though, uh, since, uh, you know, we are um, doing this for IAIA, 
is what type of content uh, do you think would be right for artists? You know, um, you know, and, and, and not just like, you know, uh, let's say you said, well, uh, you know, we could do a blog post. Um, what might, if you did a blog post, what, what might would uh, it be about, right? So what would be like a specific piece of content that you could produce as an artist that you would think would be easy for an artist to produce? What do you guys think? Maybe something specific about the media that you work with, like where do you get your clay if you're a potter, you know, and why is that clay coming from that place really special? Uh, what does it mean? Um, you know, people are curious about things like that, or, you know, weavers, many weavers raise their own sheep. And they, you know, share cards, spin, they do it all. Um, so I don't know, maybe something like that I know would fascinate me. Yeah, so, and, and you can do that in a number of different ways, right? You could video that, you could video the whole process of something being made, the sheep being sheared, right? Um, you know, uh, the, the wool, you know, being cleaned and put on a loom um, and, and then woven. I mean, so, you know, there's that, that whole process. Um, you know, you could write an article um, uh, like of uh, like you were talking about uh, as a sculptor. You know uh, how you got a certain clay, right, and why this clay is better. Or, or you could even make instructional, uh, you know, a instructional video or instructional article. Um, you know how to choose your clay, right? Um, you know that might. It, you know, you may be saying, I want somebody to buy, uh, you know, my sculpt, uh, uh, you know, uh, my uh, sculpture that I've created. But, you know, what you also may be doing is by creating that, you're exposing yourself to people that maybe you weren't originally, um, you know, you wouldn't have been able to reach. And then they can recommend you and say, hey, uh, I'm a sculptor and I really love what Anna Maria is doing. Right. And then that exposes you to new customers. So you don't have it. it sometimes it's not a direct link. Oh, well, I don't want to write about why I use a certain uh, a certain product or, or the reason why I use a certain ingredient. Um, because I'm not trying to do how-to videos. I want people to buy what I'm selling. Okay, but you gotta, you gotta expand your mind. Really what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase your audience because with a bigger audience, the more, like, uh, more likely that you will get sales. Uh, and Nisha mentioned in the chat box that uh, something that, that they do is to donate gift cards to nonprofits or other places they wanna support. Uh, they do all the advertising and get our name out there. I think that's great. You know, so uh, so they're doing the work for you, right? They're helping you. Um, another thing, you know, especially like if you were giving gift cards away, you know, you know, one of the things I was thinking about with tattoos is soldiers coming back from overseas. A lot of times, soldiers have PTSD issues, and you know, so and some, you know, and tattooing can be uh, almost a pain relief, right? They they uh, allows them to express something by putting it on their body, remembering. Uh, some of their friends that may have died in war or were injured in war. And if you were to do some of those things, you know, you could be able, uh, you know, that's a great, you know, PR uh, option. Um, so, um, you know, uh, you know, so, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you could do um, in developing content, right? And it's not just all writing, right? There's, there's videos and things. I do want to show you one writing. So Lynn just mentioned that she's not a writer. She's lying because I'm going to show you something that Lynn has done. So let me pull up my um, web here. So, um, so a while back, um, one of the things that we have always been interested in is getting uh, entrepreneurs grant money. And it's always been very difficult. And so Lynn developed a page for, um, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, where a Native American entrepreneur can find grant money. So um, if you were to go into Google and you're searching, uh, you know, Native uh, American uh, business grants, okay? So the first one that comes up is the SBA, the Small Business Administration, then the BIA, right? These are huge government agencies. But let's say we were uh, we had somebody that scrolls down. Oh, look who's down here at number five, Native Biz. I know who uh, who runs Native Biz. That's uh, the, the IDRS Acorn Project, right? Uh, and what if we even put small business grants in uh, in, um, in our search here? Then we come down 
Okay, here's SBA one. Oh, native biz is number two. Um, so you can see that there are not that many uh, uh, places on the internet that are talking about um, small business grants uh, for native businesses. And so um, that is getting a lot of juice. Now, what this is called is search engine optimization and search engine marketing. Um, there's, there's all that kind of stuff, but um, content marketing is a big component of that. But by Lynn developing that content um, is ranked very well in a search engine and drives a lot of traffic to us, right? And, and just by producing that one piece of we have gotten a lot of clientele out of it. So when I click on it, just you guys see what the um, the internet is unstable all the time. Okay, uh, Lynn, can you still hear me? Yeah, you were cutting out a little bit, but I was going to say that. Um, I wrote this and it is on our website, but when I originally wrote this, I wrote this as a guest for someone else's blog. Right, right. And, and it, it was, and her blog was generating so much traffic. You said, I think we got to put that on our website. Yeah. And I, I actually reached out to her and I was like, Hey, I noticed that you've been kind of blogging a little bit about about this topic and I actually kind of happen to be you know through what I do I know a whole lot about grant funding for small businesses specifically Native Americans and I was like do you care if I write an article for your blog and she was like yeah that's great so I wrote something and she put it on her blog and we added it to our website and yeah like you said now we kind of come up right at the top of the search rankings if you look for that yeah so yeah, so here, here's the page, uh, you know, uh, Lynn, Lynn did yeoman's work here, uh, did, did a you know, ton of great information there. But let me show you, and this is why we always want to talk about analytics and measuring where customers are coming from. Now, it's a lot easier. I will say it's a lot easier with websites. All this stuff is built in, right? You got to, like Lynn was talking about earlier, you know, you, you got to put in little codes when you're doing other like physical stuff, right? It's it, so I will say it's a lot easier when you're doing with websites, but I'm just going to drag this over here. And this is the analytics in our back page. This is for the uh, past seven days. Uh, Lynn, would you say that you, um, gosh, what, two years ago uh, that that was written? It's been quite some time, right? Oh, it's been more than two years ago. I'm right. pretty sure. More than two years ago. Okay. And, 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 and we write, you know, you know, we're always, you know, putting new content. But look at how many views that we've had in the past week. That is by oh, far. Oh, wow. I that didn't is, know that. <laughs> that is by far the number one page that we've had on our site. That just still continues to attract people. This is the power of, uh, of, uh, uh, of content marketing, right? Having a website and then putting content on there that attracts people. And this is free and it's continuing to generate results year in, year out. And if you look at number two, is this California Microbusiness COVID-19 Relief Grant. That's a page I just recently created. And I'm pushing money from Facebook to that, right? I'm advertising. So even with those advertising dollars, that shows you sometimes that's why it's important to measure because even with the advertising, uh, we're not generating the same type of response that this page that we created for free is. So, the, so, so I just want to show you how valuable and how powerful content marketing can be. Because I think a lot of times you, you see this and you're like, oh, okay, great, I got it. Yeah, do content marketing. It's difficult. And, you know, you, you know I got it. But no, it, it really can help your business when you can generate a piece of content that people really find valuable. And I think you, you, you will see this as well. Like in the social media world, you hear about something going viral, right? And then all of a sudden their business blows up, right? You know, it's hard to develop those viral pieces of content, but when you can, it's 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 very, very powerful. So, uh, you know, I want to show everybody that. So um, so because we're, you know, obviously always running out of time, let's roll on email marketing because email marketing goes hand in hand. You know, it's also interactive. 
Um, so what's email? Uh, well, I mean, I think everybody knows what email is. And email marketing is just marketing via email, right? So, so what's the beauty of email marketing, right? It's affordable. So um, yes, you may have to pay a vendor uh, to do uh, email marketing, um, but uh, oftentimes, you, uh, I, I mean, it, it, it may be best to do that, but um, it can be very inexpensive or even free. But in, in any event, it's uh, for what you're actually paying for, it's very affordable, right? You get to stay in contact with your customer, right? Thus, it's interactive. Most people still use email. I know there's a lot of people that don't have email or their email changes and they, they're moving to social media, but um, I, I think you'll see that email continues to be the medium. It's just, um, I mean, in business especially, right? There's just nothing else that can really replace it that, that everybody's going to use, right? It's so you know ubiquitous. Everybody has it. So that's why... Um, and that's why people, people use it, you know, and, and I didn't really expand on this earlier, but uh, I have it here again, you own it, right? If a Facebook went away tomorrow or Facebook got mad at you and kicked you off, um, I, I was just reading a story about some, something happened with somebody uh, had an Instagram, they had, a, uh, it was a photographer and they had a hundred thousand uh, subscribers or, or people that liked uh, their, their page or friends or whatever it's called on Instagram. And uh, they, and for some reason, uh, it, it, it wasn't their fault. Uh, uh, Instagram shut them down, right? They just lose. They lost all of that immediately. That doesn't happen with you when you own your email list. You have all these emails. See, the, the, you own that, right? And as long as you're not doing anything nefarious, you're going to be great there, okay? So, so that's why. So this is, and, and higher ROI, right? If it's very inexpensive and you're getting a lot of sales for it, you're going to get this higher return on investment, okay? So, um, uh, so, so where can you go to email market if you haven't thought about it? Um, your own email provider, right? So that could be even Gmail. You can start there. You don't have to go and purchase something special. You can start. And I'm going to show you in just a second how, how we do it. Uh, and then there's email platforms. You know, uh, you, I'm sure you guys have all heard of MailChimp. That's a real big one. It's advertising, uh, constant context out there, HubSpot. We actually use ConvertKit for our email here at IDRS. And, um, you know, so let me just quickly show you that. I'm gonna pull up my, give me one second, let's pull this back up and pull. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So first I'm gonna show you uh, how I've been uh, using just even Gmail. So this was, okay, I got it. Um, this was a letter, um, oh gosh, just, all right, don't show it again. So much stuff pops up. This was an email that I was sending out promoting that webinar and the grant that I just did. Saved it as a draft. And then I actually went in and there's a program um, and you can get this. Um, I think a lot of times they're costing around $50 a month, but it's MailMerge software. If you guys are familiar with uh, Microsoft Word has MailMerge features that you can bring in a spreadsheet from. Uh, Excel. That's one of the things we used to do in the office world, but they have something very similar that you can use using a Gmail and uh, using um, uh, the Google Sheets on here, which is all free software. You have to pay for this little plugin, but the Google Sheets and the Gmail is free. And so what we do is we have an email list. I'm hiding their email. So when this goes up on the web, not all of our uh, emails are exposed. But what I did is I scheduled an email and then uh, I, and actually here, I'll show you how I do it. Uh, I just go here to extensions. The software we use is called Mail Merge with attachments. And so you can choose which merge sheet. You can see I have a number of different merge sheets and I can configure my Mail Merge. This is gonna pop up real quick. Oh, of course, you know what? It's not gonna show it because I have multiple uh, Gmails open. Uh, I apologize. Anyway, I'll describe uh, what, what, what was going on there. Essentially, what would then happen is it allows me to select uh, what I want to send out. Um, it allows me to select, um, uh, you know, like who it's going to be from. Very simple. There's only about two or three uh, buttons or face me, three or four little screens that you fill out, not even a lot on each screen. And then you just hit send and it, it, it mails it out. And um, I was able to mail out to this list 200 emails 
right from a, a Gmail account, right? And then, you know, I bought that piece of software, which is $50 for the year. Um, but other than that, didn't have to pay anything for it. Um, now I will show, so that's one of the things we've been doing. For sometimes we have some contact, uh, tribal contact information in there. So those were for our tribal contacts. But we also have a much bigger list that we use for our native entrepreneurs. Um, uh, we have about 3,000 names on it. So for those, when we're emailing to them with those much larger lists, we don't want our, our uh, email account to be shut down on Gmail, right? So you don't want to push tens of thousands of emails through, uh, through your Gmail account. But if you're doing it, you know, you're only doing one mailing a month and you got a hundred people that you're sending it to, there's really no need. Even though a lot of those providers, like I mentioned, have a free, um, a, uh, a free uh, level where you don't have to pay like, I forget what it is, but I think MailChimp has something to where you can get like 500 uh, emails uh, before you have to pay. Um, but, but we use, um, you know, we'll, we'll use something like here on um, a convert kit. And so um, this is, I mailed also trying to do that webinar. You can see all the people. Um, it, the nice thing when you're using an email a platform like this is it gives you a lot of data that you can use. How many people actually opened my email? How many people actually clicked? You can see not a lot of people clicked. This uh, grant program was for businesses that, were, uh, that have made less than 50,000. So anybody that was over 50,000, I made sure that they knew that they wouldn't be qualified. And so then what, you know, why, why sign up, right? So that's also another thing, right? So there could be a reason why there's a low click rate um, and it may not always be bad, right? If I'm trying to qualify uh, my client before I have them sent here. Um, and then, uh, so you can actually, I'll show you here what the email looks like. Uh, there's all these templates that you can build out and it allows you to really be very specific. And we have all these lists built in here and I'll actually show you here. Uh, let's see if I, um, let's see if it'll allow me to do it. Actually, uh, let's see if I go back to all broadcasts here. Um, so this is a draft. I'm gonna just show you a draft real quick. And this is if I wanted to send it out, um, I can actually send out and I have all these different lists and I have lists uh, specified to where I have different um, entrepreneurs that we've worked with, right? So I have people in Bishop and Big Pine and Inyo County. Uh, we have Coyote Valley up in Mendocino County. These are all places here, that, like since this list was targeted just at California, these are all in my California uh, people. And so I have all these lists because if I'm going to do an in-person training and I'm going to uh, Bishop, uh, which is on the Eastern part of California, if you guys aren't familiar, I don't want to send an email out to somebody up in Mendocino County. That's six hours away. Those people are not going to attend in person. But I built these lists out so it can. So when I'm targeting, I can target the real uh, the people that I want. That you know. Now that's us, and you know that's part of um, our our business, and, and you know, and, and we want to make sure that we see the, the right people are seeing our emails. Um, you may not want to get that fancy and you may not want to do that. So just do what, what's appropriate for your business. You just do what's best. What we want to do is we want you to improve your business, right? And as you get more sophisticated, maybe you want to go further, but you know, so, um, oh, we just had a, a 4.3 earthquake in uh, Bishop. Oh my goodness. I wasn't looking at my thing. I'm, I hope everybody will be praying for you in Bishop. I hope everything is okay. A lot of uh, seismic activity on that. I heard about that one in Ridgecrest that happened uh, what about six months ago or so. So, um, but crazy, crazy ambition. I'm talking about Bishop and here's an earthquake. So uh, we'll be praying for all the people and Bishop. Um, so, uh, so, so that's our email platform and it gives you a lot of data. We're paying, I wanna say, and we're all on a nonprofit discount. And I think we pay about $300 a year for a convert kit. Um, but for the three thousand dollar level, I think it may be up to five hundred dollars for the year if, if you know if you get that. So um, let's see here. Um, let me go back real quick and mention so how to capture emails. So this is this is very important. Um, it, you know, you could do gorilla style pen and paper at the art market, collect business cards, but even a pop up on your website. Right here's another reason why it's valuable to have a website having social media posts that drive people to your website to sign up. You know, we talked about a lead magnet and even having an event or having a webinar. Now you have these people that sign up for your webinar. If you have an educational 
uh, uh, you know, thing that you can do. And then they sign up and now those people are on your list. And uh, Lynn, I'm cutting into your time. Do, do you want to, uh, uh, should, should, uh, can I cut right to you now to, to talk about uh, developing the right yeah. message? Yeah, yeah, it'll just take, it'll just take me a, a minute. Um, so as we're talking about, you know, all these different ways that you can advertise your business. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out, you know, Mark mentioned it at the beginning and we've talked about it in previous classes. You know, this is something that I learned several years ago and this is kind of stuck with me. And so this is kind of, um, I guess the, the format that I follow when I'm creating, uh, you know, advertising and know your target market because you need to make sure that you're creating um, an advertisement that is really to speaking to that group of people. And especially if you're doing something like, you know, if it's a Facebook advertisement or something like that, or in the newspaper, or maybe you're even developing a flyer. Um, if you can always keep in mind that when you're addressing that target market, if you can address what their pain points or their interests are, it's going to make that advertisement um, a, a lot more beneficial for them and you're going to get a lot back in return. And if you can make some type of emotional appeal. So I have two advertisements. Smart, go ahead and just flip it over. And I know these are advertisements for landscape and lawn care businesses. Neither one of these are my husband. So um, everyone is welcome to be honest. But I just kind of wanted to ask, on what I just talked about, about um, doing advertising that's directed towards your target market, directing it, um, making sure that you are creating like an emotional appeal, which one of these advertisements do you guys think do a better job about that? And again, this is not, this is, you're not going to offend me. It's not my husband's business or anybody that I happen to know. I think, I feel like my daughter was answering your question. Um, oh, that's good. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I didn't hear it all, but yeah, I, I don't think she knew she was on the thing. Um, well, I was going to say uh, like the one with the people, but it's hard to tell right away what they're trying to sell. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So there is good points and bad points to both of these. Um, you know, the one on right. the right with the dad in the yard, you know, playing with his son. Um, I would say that that is probably, you know, it is a little more directed toward a target market. Um, this is probably, you know, directed toward, hey, it's working parents. And as working parents, we don't get a whole lot of time to spend with our kids. So if we were to hire a, a lawn care company, then instead of, you know, mowing the lawn on the weekends, we could be doing other things like spending time with our kids. So to me, it does have an emotional appeal. Um, it talks to a target market. As you said, it's not there, it could be a little bit better in um, that it could display maybe a little bit more at first um, about what they're doing. But, you know, it, it does say along, you know, the whole bottom, like, you know, mowing and edging and planting. Um, the one on the right, it's not a horrible advertisement, but it's very um, company focused. So, you know, you have to remember that whenever you're advertising, it's not just about advertising, hey, look at me, and this is what we do. When you're advertising, you need to have more of the attitude um, from the customer's perspective, which is what's in it for me. And <clears throat> so that in that case, I do think that the one on the right does a little bit better job. And if you flip onto the next one, you'll see how this company can take the same exact message and just by changing the imagery, um, it has a different emotional pill for different people. So the one before, you know, it was an emotional pill to those of us who are working parents. And now you see uh, just by changing the image, it could be the emotional pill is, you know, these are older people. They don't have kids at home that they're having to spend time with, but, you know, now they get to go out and do something that they enjoy doing, which is golf. Um, and the other guy on the right, you know, he's probably worked hard all week. And the last thing he wants to do is uh, come home on the weekend and, and have to push Moa's yard. So 
again, I, you know, this is a topic that I would normally spend like an hour on, on how to develop um, some good advertising messages, but I just wanted to give you what I think is kind of the gist and the most important and the thing that I always try to remember when I am developing something. So focus on your target market, try to have some kind of emotional um, appeal and just making sure that your message is addressing your customer's pain points or their interest and not just, not just promoting your business itself. Is that quick enough? <laughs> You know, I, I, I was gonna say I really like this. Uh, you know, I really, I really like. I think that's a very powerful thing, right? It gets people to think. In the previous one, uh, you know, you look at Canopy. Yeah, maybe Canopy is you know better designed. You know, uh, you know maybe they're using you know their fonts and colors in a certain way. But I really like you know what this is saying, right? When you're when you're thinking about it, and I, I'm assuming these are flyers, right? Um, right that are being handed out um you know uh, you know uh, i think if we know that long if it's going to be long care right because if you read down you can immediately you don't immediately see it but if you look at four seasons lawn care and landscaping it's land care canopy uh lawn and landscape so you you basically know what the business is you know when we talked about products features and benefits sometimes you don't have to say what the benefits are they know that if you hire this person you're probably gonna get your lawn cut but i i I do think, you know, I do think that the Four Seasons is really targeting the customer and it's really putting the customer to say, what, you know, what is, what is the benefit of hiring? You know, it's not just that I get my long cut, right? That's, that's the product, but I really get my time freed up. So I think it's, I think it's really, uh, really a powerful message. And, um, and, and it really, when we're talking about these things in the class, um, about like thinking about features and benefits or, you know, it, it, you can, it, it, you can see, you can actually put these into play. You don't have to be, oh, I, I have to wait until I'm a million dollar business to, to utilize these things. No, you can do these even as you begin. There's ways to, to do that. And, um, and, and, you know, I think the, this one on the right would definitely drive sales. And because um, uh, this, um, this company has used different images um, and if you understand where people live and if people are driving around Tulsa, they can like, oh, and, and places where you have young families, okay, I can put this flyer, right? But I have a different flyer that's going to attract to a demo, uh, different demographic in a retirement community. So, and whereas if you only have the one, they may say, oh yeah, I, you know, I'm a veteran. I want to go with that. But, you know, I don't think it really plays on what the benefit is for the end customer. So, so, so I think just I think the one on the right's a better ad just because it's doing more of what it wants to do and that's sale, right? You're more likely, I think, to get a sale from the right one than the left one. So, uh, Lynn, I, um, if I can add, I think that the company on the right started their company from the very get go with advertising in mind. They named their company Four Seasons. Well, that's what most um, gardens or lawns go through, yeah, unless you live in San Diego, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you know, someplace really, really always cold. But that really tells you right off the bat, we're here for you for all year, not just. Like this looks like summer with the little boy and the ball. Whereas the other ad, I keep looking at it and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, Canopy is the biggest font that is in there. And what does that mean? I'm confused. Right. Canopy, yeah, I don't. Um, is it the, is it the guy's know, name? And the fact that it's veteran owned and operated oh, could be really a big, big thing because. A lot of us really like to support our veterans, but it's really this smaller font and it, and it doesn't really, um, I, I think that they need to change the name of their company. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you just something else interesting. Um, and I just know this because my husband, you know, is in the same kind of business, but the primary my husband's primary customer, and they can be married, but the people that my husband deal with are the women. 
So they are either single women or they're married, but it's always the wife that my husband deals with. And I find that the canopy lawn and landscape is very masculine brand. Um, and that may be something that doesn't appeal to a lot of, you know, a lot of women. It's just, it's very masculine. So those are some other things to think about too. Um, not that he doesn't mow men's lawns, but, you know, usually it's typically, it's the woman that's calling him and, and she's at home looking and taking care of this kind of stuff. So, and, and, and um, so, I, thought, so I wanted oh. to add to that too. The, um, I think the, the one on the right in terms of comparison, like the layout and flow is a lot more appealing. So like, you know, for naturally, at least for me, I'm a, I'm a box checker. So when you see bullet points, that just tells me, bam, what I need to know. So when you have it listed like a checklist, you know, of everything of what that service is, is super helpful. And yeah, then, instead of like the other one says full service lawn care, and some people may be like, well, what does that mean? Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> what does yeah, I mean, full service mean? <laughs> and when, when these advertisements, I mean, you'll like even with Facebook, there's sometimes a text limit. So the one on the left hand side, everything just seems bam, 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 bam. What do I need to concentrate on? So it seems kind of text heavy to me. So I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty busy. Uh, I, I, I also think they didn't have to say weekly mowing and bi-weekly mowing. I, I think they understand that, you know, if you want them to come every other week, they can do that as well. So they, I think they wasted some of their precious Depending, advertising space. You know what's interesting, though, is that uh, my husband will not do bi-weekly mowing for people. Oh, oh, interesting. So that's actually a thing that, and so that may be, he may be advertising that as a benefit. Yeah, my husband won't do it because, uh, you know, people are usually doing that because they want to try to save money. But then if you go two weeks in Oklahoma in the summertime with that mowing your grass, it's two foot tall and it tears his mower up and creates a lot of problems. So, Oh, interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. You learn something new every day. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I know we're already out of ta uh, time. I, I don't want to keep you uh, more, but, you know, I just wanted to show you one other thing just real quick. I'm actually, I'm just going to pull this over here. This is a PDF. So, um, so Lynn's, uh, I sent this to Lynn so that she can post it. Um, you know, we've been talking about a lot of different things in this. Um, this is really dated. This gentleman, Jay Conrad Levinson, he passed away several years ago. Um, but he came up with this 200 marketing weapons. And, you know, there's tons of books that we could, you know, I don't know that we could recommend. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, you know, what are your favorite books? There's so much information out there. It's hard. But one thing that's always stuck in my mind is this um, 200 marketing weapons. This is from a book called Guerrilla Marketing. And, and, and one of the things is when I was younger, and I was running my DJ business, right? And, and I was looking for everything to do free. You know, how could you do stuff free? I always looked to guerrilla marketing weapons because it's either free or low cost. He was always suggesting uh, ways to do that. So, so we put that in there because, you know, the, I think having a list as you go through something like this and you think about it, and, th and this is the same thing we said before with a lot of the other things, don't do everything on here, but find things on here that help your business. Right. And if there's, if you've run out of ideas and said, I don't know how to market my business. Go back to this list. There's always something else that you could be doing uh, if, if you have the time. You know, if you have the time to do something, but you don't have the idea, uh, we just want to make sure that you always have something that you can go back to and refer to and, and, and check out. So, so, so we'll put this on the list as well, because this was kind of I, we had a section in here that was going to be for everything else. And so. We'll, we'll just leave it here with 200 marketing weapons is everything else, right? Because I think he has everything on this list. So we won't talk about and really his time. book. I just mentioned in the chat that it's one of my all time favorite marketing books. Yes. It's, so, it, it, yeah, awesome. His guerrilla marketing. It's yeah. Get on Amazon and get it. I'm sure it's not very expensive and it's really a good book. And you, as you go through there, you, you do get to read about all of these um, 
different types of things, which I think is really good for the um, the micro businesses like we are, you know. Right, exactly. And even though it, and even though it's a little bit old, you'd be surprised how many of these things still apply. Look at number one, marketing plan. So that's the point of this class, right? What is your marketing plan? Developing it. You know, we talked about a, a, a um, in the last class a social media calendar, right? Well, what's your marketing calendar? When are you going to release flyers? When are you going to do some advertising? When are you going to do some PR? Being able to put that on the calendar, you know, all that's all, a lot of this stuff is still relevant and can still help help your business. And like Lynn just said, especially for micro businesses, you know, yeah, if you, yeah, when you guys all become multi million dollar artists, first of all, just remember it was because of me and Lynn. So make sure uh, you know you spell our <laughs> names correctly on the checks, but. Um, you know, um, when you get the when you get big, you can hire people to take care of this, but uh, you know, take care of all your marketing. But until you get there, you know, find ways that you can get out there and, and market yourself, you know, for free or or free or low cost, and uh, increase your revenue. Right, that's what we're hoping that we want for you guys. We want you to sell more. We want you to increase your revenue. We want you to increase your profits. We want to increase your family's wealth. I mean, that that's the whole purpose of our. Um, of our micro enterprise program. So, anything else, Lynn, or should we just uh, send them out with the with the slide, the, the, with our contact information? And oh, of course, I've lost it. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna have to. I will never get it back. So I'm just gonna go here to the end. And hold on one second. And there you go. And of course, yeah, you know it feels like if we got fed by a fire hose tonight. This was a lot. Yes, and I always say I'm going to put Lynn on here. So now, because I don't have the whole presentation up, so I can just do that. So now, Mark or Lynn, please track us down because uh, we're here to help. You know, it doesn't have to end today. Even though the class ends today, it doesn't have to end. So uh, it, our relationship uh, doesn't end. All right, we want to keep going, and we're rooting for you guys. So, um, well, if that's it, I, I'm going to say good luck to everybody. Thank you very much for participating. Um, I had a lot of fun and we look forward to seeing you guys. We look forward to hearing from you guys, hearing about your progress, working with you guys and seeing you in more classes in the future. So thank you very much, Anna Maria. I'm a, I'm a huge Basque restaurant fan. So when you start your Basque restaurant uh, out there in uh, New Mexico, I'm coming to, to eat at it. You know, Or if you, if you ever come our way, I'll, I'll meet you in Nevada. I have a lot of Basque restaurants. I'm big fans I'll introduce you to. I have one question. Okay, uh, Alex, what's up? Okay, how much, how many, you know, what's the percentage on whether or not you have the secret sauce? Because that's that's one of the main factors of, of um, because you could run a business and you could, you know, just don't have the right attitude, the right, you know, or, you know, product, I guess. So what, you know, how, how would you, you know, figure that out and, which way to go without going bankrupt? Oh boy, that's that's a hard question. I don't know if Lynn has something <laughs> off the top question. of her head. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, I would just say it like this: I don't know that there's any secrets. You know, I don't. I mean, I, there's there's ways to to know how to do things, but I'll tell you, there's people that don't know how to do. Uh, you know, that that maybe don't aren't running a great business, but they have a great product and it's successful. There's people that have a great product, um, but don't know how to run a business and they don't make any money, right? It could be the, the same thing, right? Could be flipped where you have somebody that has a poor product, but they're a great marketer and they still are able to make money, right? Um, you know, uh, and then other ones that are, have that, but they but they can't, you know, it, it's, it, business is very, finicky there's no guarantees and so i just think what you have to do is you have to um do your best find ways to survive because obviously the longer that you're in business the more uh, the more experience you're going to get um you're going to have the chance to increase revenue increase your customer list so that's the that would be my my thought is like you know is as long as you can keep going you know um, I, and I, I think if, you, you know, know and I actually have, I, I have some uh, advice, advice here because okay. I'll, I think some of the most successful entrepreneurs that I know 
are those people that are constant learners, you know, so they are always, they're coming to classes like this, they're reading, they're always trying to learn more about business and how to make their business better. And then the other thing that these people, the, the successful people do is they surround themselves with other people that are like-minded and, you know, we have mentioned Mary Beth's name a lot. Well, Mary Beth was just, she was a client that I happened to be working with when I was doing some work uh, through Cherokee Nation. And she is one of those people that she is a constant learner and she's always looking for people that know more than she does or knows different things. Um, and so she just developed a relationship with me and her and I talk at usually, you know, several times a week, but she calls and talks to me about her business all the time. And so I think if you can just be a continuous learner and then go out and develop relationships with people like myself or Mark, other business owners, um, and be constantly picking their brain and talking to them about business, that it's going to help you. That's, that's my secret sauce. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll stop in the recording right here.